Hi, this is Melius Marie, the Soldier of Mary. So I've been spending a lot of my uh, time researching this description of how Russia needs to be consecrated. I've done one video already on this and a second one that will be appearing later on in the week. But I, I really spent some of my time today looking at some of the experts on the Fatima message. And I actually found, as you may have done, a video by Father Gruner on the very subject of whether the Pope needs to command the bishops to join him in the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart. Someone asked him a question about this some years ago on the Your Questions Asked uh, feature on the Fatima, uh, Fatima Crusader channel. And he gives a really concise answer, which I'm going to play and I'm going to, going to give a commentary over. There is more controversy over this issue than initially meets the eye. Father Gruner is giving a, a very clear interpretation of, of the facts, but there is a little bit more to it. And I will be giving a commentary as we go along. Point two things. It's public, it's solemn, it's the Pope and the Catholic bishops of the world to consecrate Russia. So we have the quote from Sister Lucy. So in the English version of the second volume of Frere Michel, it, it, the moment has come which God asked the Holy Father to make and to order. And that is the word used by Sister Lucy to, to command or to order the bishops, the union with him, the bishops of the world. So the Pope is to give an order. It's Our Lady speaking, but she says, the moment has come in which God asks. So it's Our Lady speaking in the presence, the visible presence of the Most Holy Trinity. And Our Lady is speaking, says, the moment has come in which God asks the Holy Father to make and to command, and that's the word used, and it's Mr. Lucy's own handwriting. And it was in a document found in a, in a trunk in her handwriting in 1984. She was still alive. Uh, and she, she died 19, 21 years after that. Uh, the original document that's often quoted doesn't use the word order, but it was rewritten by her confessor. It was burnt. She had her burned, but this one is in her own handwriting. So this is the more accurate one of the two descriptions mm -hmm. of that thing. So I pause there. We heard a really clear uh, explanation of why the Pope must command the bishops. We have the quotation. Basically, we're getting um, accounts of the 1929 apparition of the Blessed Virgin to Sister Lucy. So we're getting we're getting a, a, a recording of that, an account of that. And we've been told there that Father Gruner is taking his account from uh, brother michael of the most holy trinity's book on fatima which is of books really there's a whole i think it's six books on fatima that he has written excellent excellent books and father gruner led us into something i wasn't aware of and that is the diversity of manuscripts of this 1929 apparition so it sounds like there were there are three manuscripts there's an original one that was burnt there was a second one which is rewritten by sister lucy's confessor now the one by sister lucy's confessor which is quoted in many books and that's the interesting thing if you go online to a lot of actually mainstream catholic websites and that's not a derogatory thing but but a lot of a lot of catholic websites quote this second redaction the second version which is written by Sister Lucy's confessor as a, he is, um, may we, Father Gruner doesn't go into details there, but Sister Lucy's confessor brings out into, puts, puts out there this version of the, the description of the 1929 apparition, obviously with Sister Lucy's approval, right? It's clearly with, with her approval. And it's a document that is cited in, in loads of books, on Fatima and you'll often find that on the internet nowadays and that version of the 1929 apparition doesn't say order it just says I ask the Pope in communion with the bishops to make an act of consecration so we don't have the second verb there of commanding but then we're told that later on there's another version written which is found in a trunk in 1984 I think he said and that version the one that is found recovered in her own handwriting 
says says to order that the bishops must be commanded to join the Pope in making the act of consecration. Let's resume the video. Secondly, our Lord himself, and it's not questioned anywhere at all, in 1931, our Lord refers to the command, make it known to my bishops, my ministers, given they follow the, they follow the example of the King of France in not obeying my command, like the King of France. So he's talking, our Lord refers to this also as a command. It's a command given to the Pope, and the Pope has to give a command to the bishops. So, and that's what has to happen. Okay, so in, in that section, Father Gruner draws the analogy between the King of France and his ministers that were asked to make the consecration or put the flag of the Sacred Heart, the image of the Sacred Heart on the, the flag of France and dedicate the nation to the Sacred Heart. It didn't happen. And then the French Revolution came 100 years, uh, 100 years more or less to the day. And Father Gruner is drawing an analogy, a parallel, saying, look, the king was commanded and the king was commanded by our Lord to get his ministers to follow the will, to follow, the, follow his will. And Father Gruner is saying, well, we've got a situation in like manner. Our Lord makes this parallel because he's saying the situation is the same as back then with the Sacred Heart, getting the, minister, getting the king plus the ministers to respond now it's the pope plus the bishops who need to respond okay let's move onwards and why is that because god is going to convert the world with this thing and the orthodox are going to see that the pope has the power has the jurisdiction to command and the bishops must obey him and it's the obedience of the bishops with the pope obeying the command of god mm -hmm. it comes from god and it comes through the queen of heaven the queen of the blessed virgin they must obey and the bishops must obey the Pope commanding them on such and such a date to do this, okay, to do the consecration of Russia. And so, okay, let's pause there. So he's given us an explanation as to why the Pope has to command the bishop. And his explanation is that this is to make a statement to the Orthodox of the important of, importance of collegial unity under the Pope, that the bishops are a, an Episcopal body they're all successors to the apostles, but they're under the Pope. And so the commanding of the bishops to do this act would be a sign for the orthodox of the sovereignty of the Pope over the bishops. I can see that point. It's a, it's a good explanation. The Pope's authority is clearly a stumbling point for schismatics. And so the Pope showing his authority and then bringing the conversion of Russia and, and a period of peace, the Pope doing this oh, co commanding bishops would be an even fuller sign of the inadequacy of the schismatic ecclesiology, which lacks, um, which lacks the authority, the sovereignty of the Pope. So the, the next section, the final section, looking at how this could be done in practice. The answer is in Father Cayon, he said this at a meeting of the Blue Army. I was at the International Board of the Blue Army back in 80 or 81. What the bishops, the Pope needs to do is command the bishops under pain of excommunication or of pain of demission of office. I think excommunication would be more safe, actually. Mm -hmm. That the bishops, so if the bishops are commanded by the Pope and if they don't obey and they're excommunicated, they're no longer Catholic bishops. So we don't need their obedience. So either they obey and we have the consecration, or well, they don't obey, we still have all the bishops obeying, because the other ones aren't bishops anymore, because they're outside the church. And the Pope has that power to do that. And it's defined in the First Vatican Council, the Pope has the power. And so there we, we see the there the, the idea as the hypothesis as to how the Pope could bring about this this command. And in fact, Father Gruner mentioned about the Blue Army back in the beginning of the 80s. The Blue Army was the group that was really spearheading the need to do the consecration up until the party line of the Vatican said the consecration had been accomplished, at which point they forgot about all their earlier literature, which had outlined quite clearly what the conditions were, i.e. mentioning Russia, i.e. having the bishops in union with the Pope doing the consecration. Um, they kind of threw all that stuff out and just accepted uh, the, the party line. And it was a Blue Army leader that was suggesting 
excommunication. You excommunicate the bishops that refuse to act in union with the Pope. So that's true. That would be a way of getting the, the bishops to obey. And that would be a way of ensuring that all bishops were in communion with the Pope in this act of consecration. Okay, a little response, um, because I want to be optimistic about this consecration. Fact of the matter is, this is the closest thing we've got to getting anywhere near the request of Our Lady at Fatima. And also, the fact of the matter is, it has been broadcasted in a large number of books about Fatima, um, originating with Sister Lucy, that the bishops only need to be, it's the Pope who's been commanded, and he's been commanded to do it in communion with the bishop, without any specification of exactly how that communion is accomplished. That was in this one that Father Gruner is saying, um, was written by Sister Lucy's spiritual director, but clearly with her knowledge, with her approval, and it was allowed to be disseminated throughout the world. Um, there's no precedence of popes ever commanding this kind of thing from bishops, and I'm not sure that that he would be able to command this um, and put such a penalty basically he'll be completely rewriting canon law i know the pope is the sovereign of the church but um this would be um would probably be considered quite a strong loose use of papal authority and and in fact he's he's asking the bishops with encouragement um seems seems to be a very strong movement towards our lady's request if not a fulfillment to her request because like i said at least the spiritual director of Sister Lucy was under the impression that asking the bishops was sufficient for them to be in communion with the Pope um, was sufficient. And so I think that may be a valid interpretation of the situation. I know he's given this this analogy of the King of France and the ministers of France, but, you know, every analogy has its limits. And perhaps, perhaps you see, the other point is, a pope is way above um, the bishops uh, ecclesiologically uh, compared to the, the the king and and his ministers. the the pope's The pope's rule is absolutely sovereign as a as a monarch above all monarchs, and so so the whole point, even even with the whole orthodox thing, is a pope. Let's get it in our heads what it means. The pope is taking upon himself an authority to consecrate another nation the nation of russia the nation of the nation of ukraine he's taking upon himself he's invoking his authority as the sovereign of the sovereigns you know as the one to whom or even who even has temporal authority over over the different states you know even if that temporal authority is not exercised for the most part the pope is showing that in performing this consecration and in asking the bishops to unite with him. Now, I also looked at another really important authority on on the message of Fatima, uh, and that that is um, Father Alonso came to me eventually. Father Alonso, who was um, the main, the great expert of of Fatima, who wrote loads of books on Fatima and worked at the Fatima shrine before before well he died before the the whole party line thing came in it was his view as i looked through his book today doctrine and message of of fatima which is only in only in spanish by the looks of things i was reading through it and he's he notes this um use of order and the other translations which do not have order and he sides on the side of commanding ordering he seems to think but he doesn't get explicit like father gruner did here about how that would be accomplished father father alonso doesn't talk about the excommunication thing he does say though that the pope the pope's request to bishops should be strong so as to have the quality of being in order but also father alonso adds a really interesting point which is our part our part in all this namely 
we should be getting our bishops to respond to the Pope's request to them. Because the whole point about the sign to the world is that the bishops are obeying the Pope. And that this, this massive act of obedience to the Pope brings about peace and conversion through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The whole point is like heaven wants a huge PR event for the Immaculate Heart, showing the power of the Immaculate Heart, how great the Immaculate Heart is. And alongside that, showing the authority of the Pope as the, as the, as the sovereign of the sovereigns, showing that to the whole world. And those two things are part of the conversion of Russia and will certainly bring about the conversion of Russia from Orthodoxy to Catholicism. And again, Father Alonso is very sure that leading away from schism is definitely definitely the sign of the conversion of russia not just leaving away atheism and communism again as i said he was writing in the, in those days but actually converting to the to the catholic faith so i hope you've enjoyed found interesting father gruner's understanding of the situation let's <laughs> hopefully you know father gruner that great holy apostle of fatima you know he he will be um interceding interceding for the bishops of the world they will get on board and that they will join the pope in this act of consecration maybe thank your bishops if they have agreed to join in and otherwise petition them write to them ask them to correspond with heaven's request because even if the pope hasn't commanded heaven has certainly commanded them to be involved in this act of consecration and the fatima website has got some letters that you can use to send to your bishop Okay, may Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.